hello and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel or if you're new here, hello. Today we're doing episode 24 of Two What To Handle. This is chapter 4, we're on season 3 and this is episode 8. So, we're gonna dive in. Poppy has just left and we've just had a bit of spice with Jiraiyu. Will you take advantage of Bad Lana's ruling period or is her warning enough to scare you straight? Now we have already taken advantage of it so this is gonna be hopefully a good episode. Julian's panicked voice nearly makes you fall out of bed. There's an orgy happening everyone. Come quick. I don't think I believe this. What? Huh? Excuse me. Just come. Julian rushes out of the door leaving you no choice but to follow him. Julian stumbles onto the sand as he runs and the rest of you try your best to keep up. Look! There they are! He points towards the surf, but all you can see is a stretch of water. Um, who are we looking for? Julian, buddy, are you okay? If you need anything, Julian scoffs. Come on, please. Look closer. You look a little closer at the surf to find four turtles stacked on top of each other in an unsteady pile. Beatrice recoils at the sight and Taz snorts so loudly he nearly startles the poor creatures. Matthias covers his eyes, offering them privacy. Bear steps closer and sniffs them, then tilts his head in confusion. He's so cute. The turtles are having an orgy. They're what? I will. I'm going to laugh. I'm just going to laugh. I'm just going to laugh. You burst out laughing at the Tower of Turtles. It looks like everyone is getting freaky. Right? Hilarious! The turtle on top falls off the pile, landing on its back and flailing its little legs. Actually, they're stacking to ensure they can bask properly in the sun. They take turns so everyone gets a chance. Aw, that's so cute! Julian grumbles at the explanation. A turtle orgy sounds so much more fun. You are so childish. Giselle tries to sound stern, but it's impossible with how hard she's laughing. Sean doesn't look nearly as entertained. Meanwhile, Carmen yawns. I can't believe you pulled us out of bed for this. You should be thanking me. According to my calculations, we have 16 hours left before Bad Lana's ruling period is over. We need to make the most of it. From the back of the group, Arvi scoffs. All you ever think about is sex, Julian. Me? Thinking about sex while I'm on Too Hot to Handle? How shocking. He laughs and some follow. Carmen is still too busy grumbling about being woken up early. As Arvi attempts to ignore him, Julian pokes him in the ribs with a grin. Come on, man. Admit you're the same. Sorry to disappoint you, but no. No way. Why would they let you on the show then? They just saw right through you, didn't they? He makes a pair of horns with his fingers and places them behind Arvi's head. In fact, you're the biggest hornball of us all. Arvi slaps Julian's hands away and crosses his arms. Julian! Julian's grin grows wider. Yes, Avinash? I'm far from a hornball. Sure. I'm Debbie. Julian frowns. A demi? Like a demigod? Avi rolls his eyes and walks away towards the villa. The entire group glares at Julian, but he's only staring after Avi, his mouth agape. That was a bit insensitive, even for you, Julian. What? What did I say? He turns to Jirai for an explanation, which he readily provides. Avi said he's demisexual. He can only feel a sexual attraction if he's developed a close bond with someone. As Julian's expression grows more distressed, Jirai continues. And even then, it's simply a prerequisite for... Oh, I swear I didn't know. Avi, wait! Julian immediately takes off running, trying to catch up with him. Now it's Giselle who's gaping after him. Wow, I never knew Julian could run that fast. I've never known Julian to apologize, but he actually seems to feel bad. I guess he wants to set the record straight. Before you can think too much about it, somebody gets your attention. Jiraiyu tilts his head towards the villa, mouthing, Rooftop? Oh, I guess Jiraiyu wants to talk. As soon as you reach the rooftop, Jiraiyu pulls you into the circle of his arms. He gently kisses your forehead and you easily lean into his embrace. Sometimes I think you're too good to be true. The way I feel about you. I always thought this feeling only existed in romance books. Jirai's words come out with unbelievable ease. Everything feels different with you. Every time you smile at me, every time you touch me, it feels like I'm being touched for the very first time. Warmth floods your chest. You reach up to gently caress his cheek. I feel the exact same way, Jirai. I just can't get enough of you. And your random fun facts. You both laugh. That reminds me. Did you know that in some big cities around the world, there are beehives on the top of the tallest buildings? It's to protect the bees and give them a safe space to thrive and pollinate the surrounding areas. If I didn't, I most certainly do now. 
Jiraiyu gestures towards the hot tub. Should we make use of that? You read my mind. Jiraiyu helps you into the tub by holding your hand and then dips into the water himself. He stretches, letting his muscular body fill the small space of the hot tub. Hey now. Yes. You're hugging the tub. There's plenty of space for both of us. You make a show of looking around, pointedly ignoring the fact that half the hot tub is unoccupied. I don't see any space. Luckily for you, I saved a seat for you right here. He pats his knee. Very smooth. I try to be. You decide to play along and glide towards him. You perch yourself on his knee, sitting so you can face him. He's watching you with a hunger that makes your stomach twist in excitement, his eyes darker than usual. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I'm awfully glad Lana isn't the one in charge right now. You bat your eyelashes at him innocently. And why would that be? Because right now, all I want is to make you feel good. His fingers trail down the length of your spine. I know I'm being very forward right now. But who knows how long we have. Either way, no time with you is ever enough. But I wouldn't mind making the most of the one we have right now. He holds you closer, stronger, showing you exactly how much he wants you. And if it wasn't evident enough, his hardness presses up against you. Jiraiya and I have an opportunity to break the rules free of charge. I'll... Well, we all know what we're gonna do at this point, don't we? <laughs> I'm sure Lana will forgive us. Bad Lana will, at the very least. Mischief sparkles in Jiraiyu's eyes. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. He pulls you so you're sitting in his lap, facing away from him. His arms hook around your waist so his body is flush against yours. A spark of desire floods your body as you feel his arousal pressing against you even harder. You rock against him gently, teasing him as much as he's teasing you. Careful, Jesse, Jiraiyu warms, lips against your ear. You'll make me want to do naughty, naughty things to you. He hisses as you grind against him again. Maybe I want you to do naughty things to me. You dare him. And that's all it takes for him to slide your swimsuit off, following with his, leaving no space between you. His hands curve to your entrance, teasing. He swears low under his breath and then slowly, he pushes into you, his entire length completely filling you. You rock your hips against him, urging him on. And he groans, rolling his hips upward to meet your thrusts. The way he feels you is absolute, complete, sending you into overdrive. And soon your legs tremble as you reach your climax. With a groan, you can tell Jiraiyu comes undone right after you. You cling to each other, drawing out every bit of your pleasure. And soon you're left to enjoy the waves of relief your highs have brought you. You slump back into him and his strong arms pull you closer. Jiraiyu, that was... You pant out, barely able to string a sentence together. I know. He kisses your cheek. Get the words right out of my mouth. You lean against his shoulder, enjoying the warm bubbles and the morning breeze. Later, you and Jiraiyu make your way to the living room. As Jiraiyu decides to go and shower, you hear Julian and Arvi's conversation. Come on, Julian, put a little force behind it. It's about finding the right angle and pushing through. Don't be afraid to get a little rough. Oh my gosh. I'm trying. It's so much harder than it looks, okay? I know, I can see. Oh, hi, Jesse. Um, hi. What are you two? Oh. One glance at the table between them and their conversation suddenly makes much more sense. They seem to be playing a vicious game of foosball. Arvi twists the offensive rod, sending his players spinning. One makes contact with the ball, shooting it straight forward into Julian's net. Damn it! Just five goals for me and just one for you, bud. Those two seem to be getting along. They must have made up after what happened on the beach this morning. Jesse, you're just in time. We need a referee. Arvi rolls his eyes. What you need is an ice pack for how badly I burned you during that game. Arvi turns to you with a grin. Fancy a game, Jesse? Just so you know, I'm on a winning streak right now. I want to... Yeah, I want to... I want to win. I want to get that. I want to do the winning. You rub your hands together. Out of the way, Julian. Oh, I've got a foosball match to win. Julian grumbles as he gives you control of the red team. The game begins and you send the ball towards Arvi's side of the table. Julian heckles Arvi as Arvi defends his net. Seems like you two are on good terms again. That's all thanks to Arvi. I mean, he forgave me for literally outing him on the beach. Arvi waves the comment away. You didn't out me. I wanted to tell you. It felt like the right time. I'm happy you felt comfortable to share it with us. I should... I'm gonna ask Arvi about it. I hope it's alright to ask. Avi doesn't miss a beat as he sends a ball into the goal. Whoa, he is good at this game. Avi grins and turns to you. You were saying? Oh, right, so you signed up for this show yourself, right? How come? Avi pauses for a second as he contemplates his answer. You want the superficial or the honest answer? Both? 
Well, the superficial answer is it seemed easy to win it. Avi chuckles. And the honest answer is the premise of the show seemed enticing to me. Being demisexual doesn't mean you don't feel any sexual attraction. It just means you don't feel it until you really get to know someone. It's a spectrum, of course. Some folks can form attraction right away, but for others, it's a slow burn. For some people, it takes years, some for months. And on occasions, especially if you spend a lot of time together, it might only take a couple of weeks. So you usually get the hots for your closest friends, is that what you're saying? Nice, I'll take it as a compliment. As Avi scoffs in Julian's general direction, you use the opportunity to score a goal against him. It's true for a lot of Demis, friendship is often a strong foundation, but there are a lot of exceptions. You think Giselle is gorgeous, don't you, Julian? Julian frowns. I mean, of course. And you like spending time with her, don't you? She's fun, yeah. But do you want to have sex with her? Not at all. Julian's face lights up. I think I'm starting to get it. So, Avi, is that why you didn't jump into a relationship as soon as you got here? Pretty much. I know myself and I knew I needed time to figure out who really interested me. What's been your experience dating as someone who's demisexual? Is it harder? Not necessarily harder. Just different, you know? Not everyone's keen on forming an emotional bond before jumping in bed, you know? Hear, hear. Avi laughs. It requires a lot of communication between me and my partner. Doesn't hold me back, mind you. Just changes things a bit. I think I understand Avi a bit better now. I'm just gonna say, I'm glad you told us. Well, I'm really glad you told us. I feel like I know you much better now. Avi softens. Cheers, Jesse. Many folks don't quite get it. I'm just glad you two do. Julian looks sheepish. I swear I'd never heard of it before. I didn't mean to, you know. Avi smiles at him. I know. The game continues in a vicious back and forth between you and Avi. He sends the ball careening towards your net, but you block it just in time. You manage to score your 10th and final goal mere moments later. Julian seems equal parts astounded and offended. You went easy on her. I'll tell Julian. You're great too. You laugh at his theatrics. Come on, Jules. You're just as great. I bet you can win against any other person in this retreat. Any other person aside from Avi, you mean? Avi preens dramatically and Julian laughs. I'm gonna go grab a drink. Anyone want anything? I'm good, thanks. Me too. Julian laughs and you find yourself alone with Avi. He gestures to the football table. Fancy a rematch then? Well, before you can say anything else, Badlana chimes in. Avi and Jesse, please join the others in the cabana immediately. She flickers off, leaving you both in stunned silence. Badlana's ruling period isn't over yet, is it? Definitely not. Then this can't be good. The sun is still shining when you and Avi arrive at the cabana. You're the last to arrive and Julian offers the empty spot next to him. Just didn't get a chance to get to your drink. He scowls at the empty cup in his hand. Nope. I was just about to get it when Bad Lana showed up. As if on cue, Bad Lana chimes. Ever since my ruling period began, I've been watching your behavior. It's become absolutely clear there's no growth happening. Within the past 10 hours, there have been multiple acts that would count as rule breaks. Had it not been for my ruling period, we have one count of manual stimulation and one kiss from Beatrice and Matthias, one count of self-gratification from Julian. You jokingly shift a little farther away from him. I'm lonely, okay? One kiss between Jesse and Matthias. One act of oral stimulation between Jesse and Jirayu. One count of sex from Jesse and Jirayu. As Julian raises an eyebrow at you two, you blush. And finally, one count of sex from Giselle and Sean. Again? Wow, we've really forgotten about Lana's rules, haven't we? Julian turns to ban Lana and sighs. Okay, let's hear it, ban Lana. This behavior is unacceptable. The penalty for breaking the rules is half a million dollars. Please proceed and donate your kidneys to pay off the bill. This behavior is indeed unacceptable. To Lana. Wait, what? So we're getting away with it? I didn't say that. There will be consequences for your behavior. That has everyone in the cabana looking nervous. Carmen twirls her hair anxiously and Matthias looks like he could bolt at any minute. Even Bear seems to pick up on the tension in the room, tilting his head at Bad Lana. Giselle. Giselle, who's been biting her nails, jumps in her seat. I'm sorry about the sex. She shouts it shrilly and you have to try not to laugh. Meanwhile, Sean looks mildly offended at the apology. I have a task for you. Giselle leans forward nervously. Okay, what is it? I told you the consequences of your actions would be severe. And now, Giselle, you must select one person to eliminate. Protests go throughout the group. That's insane. You can't ask her to do that. I'm so glad I'm not you right now, Gigi. I, I can't. That's not fair. 
In case you're not comfortable with my methods, there's a solution for that as well. If you do not select someone, I will. Giselle holds her hands over her mouth, stunned into silence. Giselle continues perusing the room, and finally she takes a deep breath. I know who I want to eliminate, Badlana. Excellent. Who have you chosen, Giselle? Giselle takes a deep breath and looks forward, the fear in her eyes palpable, except Sean, who sprawled out comfortably. I'm going to eliminate Sean. What? What? Why are you... What? What? Wait, what? That's what I said. Interesting. Huh. I don't know what to think of that. I need to play the next episode. Stat. What the heck? So we laughed at the turtles with Julian, like 46% of people. 40% of people were grossed out and 14% corrected Julian. We also had hot tub sex with Jirayu, like 76% of people. But 24% just talked with him. And we also got to know Arvi better, like 72% of people. Whereas 28% of people changed the subject with Arvi. Let me know what you did down in the comments below. A massive thank you to everyone who watched this part. I appreciate you so much. And I hope you had the most amazing time. I hope you enjoyed all of it. Please let me know down below what you think is going to happen next if you haven't played it. And if you have played it, what did you think of this part? Thank you so much to everyone who watched. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much to our wonderful members who I say this at the end of every episode and I'm sorry if it's getting boring but I do really appreciate you all so much I wouldn't be able to make these videos I wouldn't be able to live stream without you and I really 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 appreciate it so so much so thank you for every single one of you who is on this list you're incredible if you haven't already please do give this video a like comment subscribe and turn on your notifications so you get notified every single time i release a video i upload two to three times a week but it can differ when so if you have the notifications turned on and select all you'll know thank you so much for watching i appreciate you all so so much and i will catch you in the next one goodbye <laughs>